Disclaimer, there are spoilers in this game, so if you plan on playing the game, do yourself a favor and click off right the fuck now. This isn't a recommendation, it's a threat. So for everyone who doesn't want to get spoiled, g game great, go play. Does not contain dead kids. Hmm, you know, I've seen this game go around a lot. I wanna try it out. I mean, I'm already spoiled with the end of the game, so I can't really be surprised anymore. But let's give it a go, plus it's pretty cheap. <laughs> Hollow Knight, a game made by the Team Cherry, which consists of three Aussies in Adelaide and funded by Kickstarter money, is considered one of the many great indie hits of 2017 and, in general, a well-known game in the Metroidvania section. In this game, you play as a scrunkless, friend-shaped little empty fella arriving in the Kingdom of Hellowness, a once well-inhabited kingdom full of bugs which fell to ruin due to a mysterious and suspicious reason. Your task now is to explore the kingdom, gather abilities, learn more about its story, make your build with charms, challenge bosses and save the world. I guess. But what happened? What is the infection and where did it come from? And why are there thousands of dead kids? We will get to these answers eventually, because this game looks like simple, like, oh, bug game, look, bug but it has a dark. So quite a lot of years ago, there was a worm, and it died. But it got reborn into the Pale King, and he and his 12 foot tall tree wife mommy created Hollow Nest, the last civilization in, I don't know, Ohio? It gave the bugs the mind, outside the kingdom it would fade and leave you mindless. It's called the Outlands or something, but my head canonical name for the for it is the section of TikTok where they factor it and autism for views. You are a part of the problem. So the kingdom was great and full of life, but you know it won't for long, don't ya? So it turned out that before the pale king arrived, there were two native civilizations, a moth tribe and a mysterious, devious, quite grim civilization called the Void Kingdom, or the ancient caste, or the ancient civilization, or actually I don't care, it's Florida. And this moth tribe worshipped a god called Radiance, and she didn't like the fact that they worshipped the pale king and went into forgottenness all of a sudden. So she spread an infection, claiming every life that had a mind and feelings with the orange juice. And just like every kind of native civilization, it is a problem. And so erected by sealing her away with three dreamers and a black egg, leaving Hello Nest in a permanent private setting until now, because the seal is fading and the infection even worse. So now every remaining bug in the kingdom is either infected, dead, or fighting for its life to protect themselves from the infection. And that's what we're going to do, baby! Hollow Knight is a metrovania, meaning that you explore a huge area and gather items and new abilities to further explore the world around you. You get a dash, you can get there, you get Mantis Claw, you get there, you get a double jump, you get over here and brain aneurysm. Lore is also scattered around the game with lore tablets such as dialogue in every corner of this end hell of a map. At one point of the game you acquire a dream here, which lets you explore the thoughts and minds of characters and enemies to progress the game and give you even more lore about the game. Oh, spicy! What also spices up your gameplay are charms. Charms are equipable items that give you small improvements or changes to your playstyle. For example, long nail makes your na ma makes nail long, or shaman stone, which makes your spell do more damage and be bigger. Some even even give you scrunches and special synergies such as fluteness and defender's crest, which combine to into a giant exploding worm instead of the small flukes that fluteness normally shoots out. Damage is unfortunately a tad bit disappointing, so we don't recommend using it. The exploration is also key of the game. That's why you get a map guy called Corner for the suit you up with some juicy cartographic goodies. And believe me, you will get lost. So without telling you all of it, your place that consists of exploring, gathering, listening, not talking, this night is as talkative as a shoe, and fighting foes in this beautiful world, and I think it's time to talk about that specific category. He's pulling his cock out. If you don't have any blues clues to what I'm talking about, don't worry, neither do I. I just had to find a term to fit the art style of music to the game in one. So starting off with the art style. It's quite unique. It's not extremely detailed like most games, nor does it have a quirky art style with dark themes. It more makes you think, 
Ah, the scranky. The characters are simple yet interesting to look at. It's something that you mostly can't really tie to real world examples. And the environment and backgrounds on the other hand look beautiful, hand drawn and designed. Overgrown areas look vivid and full of life. A more structural areas look perfectly fitting to society made by insects. And they are looking calm and almost homely. Some areas fit also perfectly to the game's emotional setting. As the game is in most areas very, uh, blue. City of Tears is a perfect example. The constant rain and oh, and especially the music, but I wanna get that about later, fit perfectly into the sad setting of being in London, Great Britain. The architecture of the buildings in Helens also give off an interesting feeling to this, odd perspective of bugs building structures and cities, and it just looks magical. Speaking of magical, let's talk about the music. Fucking finally. The sound direction and music was made by Christopher Larkin, and let me just say, we don't, we don't know, we do not deserve this god tier music. I, I can't even fucking describe this music well enough. Just listen for God's sake. It's just that good. It portrays the sad setting and downfall of the environments of the game very well. And the only thing left is the beautiful stasis of the kingdom. The description covers the area music. But the boss music! Oh, the boss music! Which is mostly just combat music of the game you use or the stand up boss team. Which is okay, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm talking about the special music. And the special music always fits. Example number one. There's a character that you meet early on, Zod. He's mostly a character that pretends to be tough, but is a walking disappointment. Such as myself. And later you find Britta, which at the beginning starts to fun love with you. Cute. But later in the game, when Zod appears in Dirtmouth, she starts to fall in love with him instead. Not cute. And you can find a totem that she built underneath her house. Dream enigma that will lead into a secret dream sequence where you find a buffed up Giga Chat version of Zod. With an orchestral fucking bang and a soundtrack that ma makes my ear gasm. Example number two. Early into the game you stumble upon a mantis village that kept the infection successfully away from them and you venture deep into the village that challenged the leader. And let me just say this. I think that the conversation for this track in Team Jerry's office went like this. Okay Chris, here's like a village full of mantises and I wanted to take the special track for it. It seems to be like hectic and make the pl player focus but don't go on too hard in it, okay? <laughs> So yeah, this goes hard as boss and this track is a common fan favorite in the community. There's also another banger track that I really want to talk about but I'm putting it on later for now. But it takes too long, don't give a fuck, Chris Larkin belongs to one of my favorite video game composers. And his music is on point with the emotional and dramatic setting of the game. Except for that one track but I'm talking about it later. Okay, so I want to talk about the ending soon, but I will keep it for later. So let's just talk about the content packages for this game, or you might as well just call them DLCs. So Hollow Knight had ma major content packages, Gods and Nightmares. Yeah, there was some stuff too, but I'm just talking about those. And technically the God Master DLC had more content than the Nightmare thing, but fine, I'll get through it quickly. Blah blah, you go to heaven and kill all the bosses and god. And it has like boss rushes with exclusive bosses you've never seen before in the game, and special arrangement for tracks like Hornet and the Mantis Lords, blah blah. And it has like two special endings too, blah blah. Are we done? No. Don't care, let's talk about Satan. Also in addition. The God Seeker calls every kind of boss their god. But this also includes the massive Mars Charger. My idea is she, she would pick up a stray dog that just looks like he has seven diseases at once and would, and just refuses to die and would call the god and put it in the fucking pantheon. Alright, the Nightmare DLC thingamajig. Through a hidden lantern you bring the Grim Tube to Dirtmouth, which collects Nightmare Essence to feed a higher being, the Nightmare Heart. And it does that through rituals involving babysitting and sacrificing Grim and his future offspring. And this... True Master Grimm, let me say, I ain't gay. 
Bam. I have several reasons why I love this fucking dude so goddamn much. Numero uno, introduction. Number two, his appearance in evil design. Mm, what a dastardly little fella. Number three, in his fight, well choreographed and it feels like a fucking like, just beautiful dance. But, but most importantly, his goddamn theme. Because that's the exact theme that I was talking about earlier in the video. Once again, my idea from the conversation in the office. Yes, I'm reusing that same joke again. Okay, so here's this guy and he's like the leader of a satanic cult who wore baby. And you find like a dance, so to speak. And... Ari, I don't think he's listening anymore. This man has the perfect fucking music for this fight. Nothing like motivating or dramatic, straight up organs and devils smirking as he cur curb stomps you. He's one of my, no, even my favorite bosses with his Dracula aesthetic and the circus act place you fight him. So yeah, he cool. Now then. I think now it's time to talk about the endings of the game. So your task is to kill the dreamers and fight the vessel that you saw in the very beginning of the game. But when you get there, you might be thinking, why did this Hollow Knight fail? When you were supposed to be completely empty to contain it. And how and what happened? Now I think it's time to talk about the really fucked up shit. Because at one point you get access to the abyss, a late game area under the kingdom, a deep pit and at the bottom are thousands of vessel corpses, all corrupted by the void. The pale king essentially let the void corrupt his children to make them completely hollow, then a climb out of the abyss should decide who's the worthy ascended vessel which is revealed to us in a birthplace cutscene. So the ki Hollow Knight was raised for the purpose of sacrificing him to save the kingdom and make his father proud. Oh no. Fatherly love is what got him, what essentially meant the infection burst out and threatened the perpetuation of Hellenist. Something Dream would never have! So the Pale King was forced to risk multiple offspring to save his kingdom, leaving him to go into hiding and eventually die in the White Palace, which makes this iconic Dream Knight dialogue no cost to great make sense. Connection terminated. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Elizabeth. See, it's very reflective on his actions. The game has four different endings. You defeat the Hollow Knight, become the next seal, defeat the Radiance, and, or do the full pantheon of Hellenists, which is hell and I haven't done it. If you did, you're a gamer. And then you've eaten the game, and you're blessed with the satisfaction, but also burden of having finished your work of art that truly made you enjoy something so minimalistic, yet so beautiful. <laughs> Community, models, musicians and artists and many more keep this game alive with a thriving community and they will not stop to enjoy this game and the lore in the fullest. People are making things like skin mods, some major content mods for Hollow Knight. There are people even making a fully voiced mod for the NPCs in the game. Waiting for the handsome little voice right there. So, it was you who called us. Oh! And Weebles Jeebles, who's drawing the night poorly for every day until Silksong releases. So all in all, it's a great community and they're all waiting patiently for Silksong. You might ask, what's Silksong? <laughs> I think it's time, me boy. So, in Hollow Knight's Kickstarter, one of the stretch, stretch goals was to add a second character, Hornet, the gendered sibling, who you encounter multiple times in the game, even fight twice. So the stretch goal was met and after the second DLC was done, it was time to work on it. Except there were some difficulties, because Hornet was too big for some spots in the map for Hornet that you wouldn't get through. So the DLC was cancelled and what did they do? Make a whole fucking game instead! 
Heck, why the fuck not? Are you tired of the sad and mossy dark atmosphere and vibe of the game? Have a more optimistic and colorful color palette instead? Are you tired of having only like three civilizations on Hollow Knight and all of them are dead? Have multiple cities and towns with their own NPCs? Even Chris Logan is back with the music and now he even has access to the full fucking orchestra instead of just running on digital music, which isn't that bad, but you know. More fleshed out combat system, bigger areas, a more agile play style, and even BIG GOLEM! Ah, that's really cool and amazing! Let's see when the last update was posted. <laughs> Hollow Knight is something that you have to experience. It's not a wonder of the world, but it's monumental for the indie game scene and absolutely worth your time. If you like perfectly woven lore, a hand-drawn art style, beautiful <laughs> and emotional music and just exploring a world of bugs, go for it. Best thing is, the game isn't even worth that much. You get that whole fucking experience for 15 bucks. That's 2.666666667 of a whole modern Destiny 2 DLC, or 136.6 period of a whole block of pure gold. And it's great, I'll tell ya. And until six o'clock arrives, let's be patient and see what creative things the community can produce while we wait. Even I, myself, am doing a weekly six song drawings, thing where I put Hornet into different games until the game releases. I'm gonna put some on screen to, so you can see some good ones. Oh, and I bet your sweet ass that I will record it and make this thumbnail spoiler free, just for you. So, t and takes too long, didn't care. Game good, play it. Oh, the sample is fuck.